This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English. Um, as I mentioned at the end of the last show, um, today I have a special guest because regular listeners will know I normally speak to my friend Dan, also known as Dan the Man. But today I have an interesting person because we know that Dan is a bit of an idiot really. So today I speak to a man called Aldo or Aldo from Italians in Fuga, which is a very famous Italian blog that gives people information about moving to another country. He has more than 100,000 likes on his Facebook page, which is similar in popularity to uh, my blog, I suppose, because I currently have 336 likes on my Facebook page. Anyway, Aldo gives some really good advice about learning languages and also about moving abroad, if that's what you're interested in doing. I personally think he also gives some great advice about life in general because he wasn't happy in his job. So he started a blog, started working at it slowly, and now he does it as his full-time job. So if you're not happy in what you're doing, you need to be proactive like Aldo and make a change. So I know about Aldo because I have been following his blog for a while. And when I say I have been, remember, I have been following. Something that started in the past, still in progress, present perfect continuous, boom. Anyway, I have been following his blog for a while, which because obviously the blog is in Italian and I think this is also good advice because if you want to learn English it's not enough just to I don't know do an English course and read a textbook try to follow other people's blogs things that you are interested in because one it's more stimulating and more motivating if you are interested in it and two the focus is not really on the learning English it's just on enjoying what you are reading, um, which is what I do when I read Aldo's blog. Anyway, as I said, it's a different type of episode, but it's still rock and roll English. So at the end of the episode, you will hear me tell a very stupid but true story that involves a friend of mine talking to his girlfriend's mother and father about condoms. Okay. I know it sounds strange, but if you listen to the end of the show, you will understand it a little bit better. So regular listeners will know that when I speak to my friend Dan, also known as Dan the Man, normally I interrupt him when he uses some rock and roll vocabulary and then stop the conversation to explain the vocabulary term. But I don't do that in today's episode because I didn't want to be rude and interrupt Aldo. I mean, it's fine to do it with Dan because Dan's a bit of an idiot, but Aldo is someone I admire. So I didn't really want to interrupt him when he was speaking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the rock and roll vocabulary now that Aldo mentions so that hopefully when you hear it in the show, you will be able to understand. And also, just before we hear the vocabulary, I've inserted a small bell sound like this. So this will allow you to understand when the vocabulary is coming and also hopefully enable you to hear it clearly and also to remember it. So the first bit of rock and roll vocabulary that Aldo uses is... Um, like a phrasal verb to say to keep at it. Um, he's talking about his blog and he says people liked the blog so I kept at it which means when something is difficult and often you want to stop but you continue to do it anyway. And the last one he uses is when he says it's a steep learning curve. Um, it's a common thing to say and basically means you have to learn a lot very quickly but is something very difficult. Anyway, there will be a better explanation of the word steep and the phrase, it's a steep learning curve on my website. So if you go to 
rockandrollenglish.com. And remember, that's rock, N, N for Napoli, rockandrollenglish.com. And click on podcast and then episode 13, you will find it. Plus all the other things that Aldo and I talk about in the show, as well as a small quiz with some of the vocabulary. So one more final thing before we get into the conversation. There were some problems with the audio. I have spent about four hours trying to fix these problems and increase the quality. But you will still notice there are some problems. But this is actually good practice because often when you speak to someone in English in places like pubs, restaurants, bars, etc., it's often very difficult to hear because there's a lot of noise. So consider this good practice, okay? Happy listening. Hello, Aldo, and welcome to Rock and Roll English. Hi there. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. It's a real pleasure to have you here. So, yeah, I've been following you for quite a long time, so I'm very happy to talk to you. Thank you very much. Uh, are you referring to my, my blog? Yes, absolutely. Your blog, which is fantastic. For anyone that doesn't know about this blog, it's called Italians in Fuga. And basically, Aldo helps... Um, Italian people to move abroad. So when I say abroad, I mean into um, a different country. So give us a bit of an introduction about your site and how and why you created it. So I created Italians in Fuga uh, in 2008. And because I wanted to do something a bit creative, uh, which was different from my day-to-day -day job, which was very much spreadsheets and numbers, and so I thought I'll start a blog and um, I thought, what should I write about? Uh, let's write about my experience of living abroad as an Italian and uh, basically sharing my experience because at the time I'd been living uh, outside of Italy for oh, about 15 years. And um, so I had obviously a very, very long experience in, in uh, living abroad. and. Um, I started the blog and it started really well. And people really responded to it, so I kept at it. And um, here we are, uh, eight and a half, nearly nine years after I started, still uh, happily writing and recording videos. So it's quite a while now. Congratulations. Um, I know what you mean about, well, sharing your experience because moving abroad is not as actually easy as people think it is I have obviously had the reverse situation moving to Italy but yeah so it's very useful so how do you help or Italian people move abroad basically at the beginning exactly sharing my experience and as you said the highs and lows of uh, uh, moving abroad so it's not it's not easy there can it can be difficult and it can be hard and um, I just wanted to paint a picture that wasn't just uh, necessarily positive but also give the uh, uh, the other side of the the coin um, after a while I found that you know the, there was only so much I could share about my own experience so I was lucky enough that I managed to find other Italians that uh, live abroad and I started doing a lot of interviews uh, with them uh, so a lot of Italians abroad that wanted to share their own experience so Basically, I've got hundreds and hundreds, literally, of uh, interviews, both written and video, on uh, on the blog and on YouTube that Italians that are living in Italy can read or watch to basically understand, better understand how to uh, progress towards going to live somewhere else. And uh, and I would like to think they also understand whether moving abroad is something they should do or not because it's not for everybody if i can help in that way it is my goal has been achieved sure but because i've seen the blog and obviously i've noticed that people literally all over the world you have people from i don't know living in sweden people living in well obviously australia england it seems to be everywhere oh yeah and, and we italians are basically everywhere so it's not it's not hard to find uh, Italians live in any country in the world. <laughs> sure. Um, okay, so now we're going to concentrate more on learning English because that is obviously what rock and roll English is about. Um, so what about the readers from your blog? What 
problems do they normally mention with the language? The difficulty for my readers or any Italian that goes and lives abroad is basically the difficulty with not having the, the basics of the language, unfortunately. So it's a steep learning curve and a lot of it has got to do with English, but uh, for other languages it's similar, unless we're talking about Spanish, where you know, obviously it's a bit closer to Italian, so the jump is less, is less severe. Uh, but for English, at least, my my uh, uh, my advice is: if you're thinking of going abroad, just concentrate as much on learning English or the other language uh, as much as that as anything else, because communicating is really the the, the foundation of a successful migration. So, really, learn the language. Be- as much as possible before you go. And then, of course, once you get there, even better. Absolutely. Well, that is what Rock and Roll English is here to do, to try and help people learn the language. Um, and when, what, sorry, what you were saying about um, Italian people have difficulty with languages. Well, if any Italian people are listening, let me make you feel better and tell you that English people are the worst in the world at learning <laughs> another language. Okay, so the situation is not so bad. We we are the worst. That that is very true. Yeah, no, absolutely, one hundred percent true. Um, okay, so some other information maybe you can give us because some studies I have read say that motivation is the most important factor in learning a language. So what advice can you give to people to remain motivated when learning English or any language? I think the main um, advice I can give is don't worry about making mistakes because making mistakes obviously is hardly demotivating, uh, but it's the only way you learn, really. Like any other thing in life, I guess, it's the only, it's the best way to learn, making mistakes, so you learn from your mistakes. So. Keep talking, keep practicing, keep reading, keep writing, keep listening to television, watching, whatever. It's it's a case of don't give up and you will improve with time. It, it will never be perfect. That's the other thing. It will never be perfect if you grow up with a different mother tongue. But it doesn't matter. Uh, most, the vast, vast, vast majority of natives will not mind you making mistakes at all. They will try to help. As long as you try and communicate, uh, do your best, they will respect that. So uh, don't lose your motivation because you feel you're not good enough, uh, because that is, it's self-defeating. No one really minds you making mistakes, so just keep trying. Sure, absolutely. I 100% agree. And as I mentioned before, even us mother tongue speakers make mistake, mistakes sometimes. Um, and you mentioned a good point about when you say keep reading, keep watching like series, keep trying to speak because it's that contact with the language which is the most important. I Often many of my students come to English lessons with me and then they don't touch English for the rest of the week. And I always try to encourage them to, like you say, read, watch series, like listen to podcasts and do all of the rest of the things that will help you learn. Okay, so let's try to get with some more sort of specific advice and practical things that maybe you could give us. So do you know of any good websites or apps that you can recommend to learn English? Obviously, we know Rock and Roll English is the best one, Absolutely. but um, any other ones that you can recommend? I, I, try, I started learning Spanish because a few years back we were going on holiday to Spain. Uh, so I thought oh, I'll try and learn a little bit of Sp- Spanish, at least we have a bit of a, a basic conversation. And what I did find very good was uh, Duolingo, uh, the app, uh, which is quite quite a lot of fun as well as obviously useful. And, and it starts from the basics, and it sort of it, it it sort of you it sort of adapts to what you're learning and to your level and helps you under, uh, redo things that you're uh, doing wrong. So I'll definitely use that. Um, in terms of what help, obviously these days we are lucky because there's so many resources available. What I, I, when I moved to England in 1990, 1990 the first time I visited, um, what I did find very useful, so no internet at the time, what I did find very useful is reading newspapers, watching television, 
because of two things. It helps you understand, of course. It helps you familiarize with the language, learn new, new uh, words, uh, different vocabulary and all that. But also, very important, it allows you to learn about the things that your uh, new friends abroad talk about. Yep. So it might be the latest sport news, it might be the latest politics, the la latest anything. Uh, but at least you, you can have then a conversation the day after with someone uh, at the coffee machine about last night's television or, or the last, last night's soap opera. But at least it helps you get in sync with other people rather than trying to have a conversation with something... Uh, have a conversation on a topic that they're not, they're not necessarily interested, you don't know anything about, and you're just trying to force the conversation. Whereas if you can talk about something that they're interested because you share a common interest, that helps a hell of a lot. And it sort of helps you sort of get in sync with the nation that you're living in rather than still being a stranger. So when someone talks about it, you're just not someone that just arrived you're someone that is already embedded in society so you get you gain more acceptance and uh, i think that helps a lot sure no that's great advice um because as you said to try and also to build those relationships with people is uh, obviously extremely useful so thank you very much for that okay so to finish the show um we love funny stories on this show so I'd like to ask you if you personally have had any um, funny stories when you made a mistake with the language and said something that you didn't intend to say, or maybe you know of any or of a funny story you can tell us. Um, I I've been oh, I've been abroad now for twenty five years roughly, so I'm sure at the beginning I made many. I can't remember because it's been so long. Um, I know a few people that have made mistakes, very funny mistakes, actually in Italian, but I'm not allowed to tell them because it's my wife and it's an embarrassing story, okay. so I'm not, I'm not going to tell you, I'm afraid. But um, yeah, maybe <laughs> offline I'll tell you. Okay. Um, I, this is a good opportunity for me to share a story at this point because I've never mentioned this on the podcast. But um, so I'd just like to take the opportunity to share this. So this was this was a friend of mine. So I'd like to say this was not me. And he was learning Italian. And when he cooked dinner for his girlfriend's parents, and he had a bit of a problem with a false friend. And so the parents were eating and say, oh, this is, this is lovely. And he wanted to say, uh, yes, because we, we make everything without conservatives. <laughs> but I, I think I know where you're going with this. <laughs> in Italian, the word for conservatives is um, what is it? Conservanti, no? Yep. Yes. So basically, he in the end he said, "Well, I say in Italian, perché io e vostra figlia facciamo tutto senza preservativi," because he wanted <laughs> yes. to say preservatives, but instead he said, "We do everything without condoms." <laughs> but <laughs> He actually told me the parents found it very funny. <laughs> so, again, it's another excuse of what we were saying before. Do not be afraid to make mistakes. Yes, yes, because that that, that actually is a really good story because that sort of uh, breaks down the barriers and they'll laugh about those stories for years to come. Um, so, yeah, that's the yes, best, best exactly. way of making friends. Yes, exactly. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time, Alda. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Um, good luck, obviously, with the blog and everything. And for all of rock and roll listeners, go to Italians in Fuga and you can find some very useful information. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. No problem at all. I hope to see you soon. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. So that was me talking to Aldo from Italians in Fuga. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope the problems with the audio weren't too bad. But as I said at the beginning, it's good practice. So I think the most important thing that Aldo said was when he was talking about motivation and he said, don't give up when you are learning the language. Remember, keep at it as we, the term we spoke about earlier. It's a long process to learn a language. So keep listening to things like rock and roll English, watching TV series, reading books, and it will slowly improve. 
Because remember, if you don't do them things, then it's only going to get worse. But if you do read books, listen to podcasts, etc., it will get better. It's very, very simple, but difficult. And if you are Italian, I say if you are Italian, because I know we have listeners in all over the world. So hello to all of you. But yeah, if you are Italian, go to Aldo's blog because he has some really good material and also offers some online courses that well could help you find the job abroad. So thanks for listening. Remember, if you want to be very kind, to leave me a review, um, good or bad. Obviously, good is better, but bad if you want. And go to rockandrollenglish.com to do the quiz about the vocabulary. And I'll be back on Thursday talking to Dan the Man about St. Patrick's Day. Rock on. Thanks so much for listening to Rock and Roll English. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit rockandrollenglish.com and facebook.com slash rockandrollenglish. We'll catch you next time.